Hello everyone. I am Shailendra Kasera from Ashir Rajasthan chapter. I welcome you on behalf of Ashir India chapter and Ashir Rajasthan chapter. Ashir Rajasthan chapter was formed on 14th of November 2019. We have organized various events for the members of Rajasthan chapter and several webinars in past one month. Let this same attitude of learning today. We are organizing the webinar presentation on variable refrigerant flow design and today we have eminent speaker Dr. Hisham Safat from Egypt. He is RAL Regional Lecturer. Dr. Hisham joined the British University in Egypt in 2014 as lecturer in Department of Mechanical Engineering. He has experience in industry and applied engineering science for over 20 years in Minako Career Industry School. Dr. Hisham has been nominated as international instructor in Ashley Global Training Center. He made several international training programs in South Africa, Dubai, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Dr. Hisham was the Ashri Cairo chapter president in 2018-19. So before handing over to Dr. Hisham, I request all the participants to raise the query through question tab only. Hisham will take your queries after the presentation. Now I would like to invite Dr. Hisham for much awaited webinar. So Dr. Hisham, it's over to you. Uh, hello, hello everybody. I would like to uh, first of all to thank uh, Ashri uh, Rajathan and Ashri India for uh, for the invitation to present uh, uh, the variable refraction flow highlights on design and applications. I would like to uh, thank uh, the organization team, uh, Engineer Usama, Shaliendra, Indrani. Uh, and I hope that this presentation could be uh, could add some knowledge to all of you. Uh, let's start first uh, with the topics that we hope that we can cover them all today. Uh, we will provide overview overview for the variable refraction flow system theory and operation. We will discuss the design and application of the VRF. We would also uh, hope that we can cover also the applicability of ASHRAE Standard 15 and the safety for the refrigeration system. Okay, let's start first simply and easily with, uh, with, with the definition and the application of the VRF. As highlighted, as you see on the screen, VRF systems are used in approximately 50% of medium-sized commercial buildings, which is about 70,000 feet square, almost 6,500 meters square. So this is one of the first description of the variable refraction flow systems. This was in an article published in Ashley Journal, April 2007. Let's go more deeper to understand the previous slide. So first, we will see this is a chart with market and conditioning group. We could see in this chart that how to select the system by the area as we see the meter square from 3000 meter square and more and the type of system so if you see that the vrf goes from from the less than 3000 about 2000 meters square and goes and then it becomes not preferred by making the color more brighter so this is very important which explains why 50 percent of the medium applications. We also have the central systems, as you see. We have also the absorption and the centrifugal. This is a very good chart that you can locate when you select the VRF system. Let's go to another definition, variable refraction flow. That's the name of the system. Let's let's think about the name and define the name again it refers to the capability of an hve system to control 
sorry, to control the amount of refreshing flow. So the first definition is to control the amount of refreshing flowing to each indoor unit. So this is the first definition. Okay, enabling to use multiple of your operators of different capacity with individual comfort control, simultaneous heating, and controlling heating zone. So very important this definition. Let's go also that AHRI standards and policy has also made boundaries for this definition, made a restrictive definition. AHRI standards and committee has very refreshing flow is an engineered direct exchange DX multi-split system incorporating at least with one variable capacity compressor. So it should be one variable capacity compressor, at least to call it a VRF. So this is the second definition. So let's go to the third slide. How does it work? Each
Yeah, hello everyone. There is some uh, technical problem. Uh, we are reconnecting the Dr. Hesham. Hello, uh, sorry everybody. Uh, is everybody can, is everything co is okay now? Yeah, Dr. Hesham, it's okay. Eh? Okay, uh, I'm asking about the slide that had the problem. Uh, we were, uh, how, does it, how does it work? Yeah. Okay, so in how does it work? It is very important, very important to know that each indoor unit sends the system, sends data to the outdoor unit. This data is sent through the electronic card from the indoor expansion valve card. This data goes and gives an order to the compressor to control the amount of flow. That's, that's the first concept of how does it work. The second concept that the outdoor unit con collects all the data through the outdoor electronic card. That's another card, electronic card. This card has an algorithm, a system of, of mathematical algorithm, equations, formulas, and manage and optimize energy saving through chips on the electronic card each indoor unit each indoor unit takes what it needs to meet its own individual requirements for the total amount of refreshing so the compressor now becomes a variable device not like the traditional one Okay, so now uh, uh, I think uh, we explained. Uh, I don't know whether uh, in the in the in the in the interruption happened. Did I explain the building uh, plan profile? Uh, Shalinda, are you with me? Uh, uh, you have not explained. Uh, can you go back to some slides? Yes, I think. Yes. Back, okay. So. Back. Yeah. Okay, so now this slide is new for all of you, correct? Okay. So the term variable refrigerant flow refers to the capability of HVE system to control the amount of refrigerant flow. Very important. This is the first definition. And this definition explains how that the indoor units will, according to the signal of the temperature, will give an order to the compressor to control the amount of flow. Another definition below in the slide from the AHRI standard policy. AHRI has made a restrictive definition, which says that 
It is an engineered direct exchange DX multi system, which incorporating with at least very important this word, at least one variable capacity compressor, distributing refresher. So any system that has no at least one variable capacity compressor, it is not considered a VRF system. Very important. And as I mentioned in this slide, uh, that the outdoor unit collects the demand data and the indoor data collects. I have explained this. We have also another definition which comes from a research, very important research, that says it is not only consumes less energy, as of course, whenever the compressor controls the amount of refrigerant flow, it consumes less energy it is not like the tradition the traditional the compressor full load on or off but for the inverter compressor which has an inverter or any variable frequency device which controls the amount of the flow will consumes less energy this research is saying it is not only consuming less energy but also provides comfort so comfort is very important also how 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 is that happen whenever you go with the traditional system when you go when you go to the desired temperature in the traditional system of the indoor system it goes on and off this will make the temperature fluctuation inside the comfort zone higher than the vrf the vrf will goes with the narrow, with a very narrow range because it gives the exact increment temperature signal to the indoor unit very good now we will go with this building load profile this is a very important slide in the presentation that's why i asked about it that it have been explained or not this slide explains how for any HVAC, HVAC engineer, how the load for any commercial buildings operate. If you see the sun, the sun goes as, all, as we all know from the east to the west. The sun at the morning, as you see at the morning, the load at the east side will be high very high at the peak for this zone and then when the sun goes at noon it will be at the south high at this at, at, at the south zone as you see and then at the west about 4 p.m it will be 4 to 5 p.m it will be for this zone it will be high peak so very important very important to know that they will never peak those three zones at the same time first lesson second lesson that you if you have three indoor units with a traditional system this load at the morning will not be at the peak and this load at the west zone will not peak at the morning only this one so the vr system vrf system with the definition we explained can achieve such profile very important very important to understand that the varying of the sun through the solar heat gain will affect much the perimeter zones in such applications so if you have any application with the zones on the perimeter like that and that is with the external load walls radiation windows vrf will be very suitable for that very important okay the benefits of the vrf as 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 uh, will be explored now zoning applications so first thing vrf is very very 
applicable to zoning applications. Variable capacity, distributed panel, low operating cost, simultaneous heating. So now let's see how the VRF, how the VRF operates on such application. If you see the, the plan view of the architecture, we will see you can put a floor unit, you can put a ceiling conceal unit, you can you can put a decorative unit in any of the zones with the same outdoor unit as you see up in the outdoor unit. From the east, as I have explained, this will take only the load for the east, the full load of the east, and the compressor will control the amount of the flow full load only for the east and part load for the south and part load for the west so that's a great advantage if we can see this in more clearer vision with temperature example if we have a room with 24 degrees centigrade and a room with 18 degrees centigrade and room C with 27 and room E with 23. What VRF? VRF will satisfy every room with its temperature. And also will the compressor will give the required amount of refrigerant for each indoor unit with the optimized electric consumption. Okay, let's go more deeper. We all studied in our colleges the vapor compression cycle and the pressure entropy diagram. The pressure entry diagram, we have four sides. The bottom side is the vapor evaporator, the top side is the condenser and the left side is the expansion and the right side is the compressor so if we if you want to see this on the vrf cycle we will see how this is done it is done by we have two thermistors two sensors one one that monitors how much refrigerant comes from the expansion and the other gives signal to how much superheat goes to the compressor and those two are linked with the two electronic boards of the outdoor and the indoor units easy that's the superheat differential that gives the signal and the order. Okay, so the compressor control in the outdoor unit are inverter driven. And this means that the speed can be controlled by varying the frequency of the power supply of the compressor. Now we understand this very well from the previous slides. The speed of the compressor change so does the quantity of the refrigerant delivered by the compressor very important also by closely matching the compressor output to the capacity demand of the system the vr system are capable of greatly increased efficiency very important conclusion so whenever matching and we will talk about this in another slides by closely matching the compressor output to the capacity demand of the system, the VRF systems are capable of greatly increasing efficiency. So it is not wise when sizing the compressor to, to make factor of safety. This system will increase its efficiency whenever the designer use accurate cooling load design and never to make oversize factor of safety. Okay, so now let's make a very simple comparison, lovely comparison to understand the comparison between the VRF system or the inverter technology 
and the traditional, the black, the black line you see on the three photos are the traditional one with the on. As you see, the full we, we see if we start in the startup stage, we have three pictures: one in the startup, one in the stable operation, and the third picture in the slowdown. So in the startup operation, we will see that the black line, which represents the tradition, it will be on with the full load. So the starting current and the ampere of this traditional system will be very high. But for the VRF, it will come smooth starting current. So in the stable operation, we will have on off, on off for the traditional system. But for the VRF, we have very smooth. We will get, we will never, we will never find such many on-off as the traditional system. Well, when you make a part load or a closing for the system, it will be very slow down. It will not be on-off, on-off like the part load. For example, for any office buildings in night uh, scheduling. Okay, let's see the inverter. We'll see that the inverter technology, this is a very good diagram explaining the inverter technology. So the inverter technology shows each, each manufacturer compete to make the minimum capacity of the VRF. This is one of the competing uh, subjects between all the manufacturers, how to reach the minimum. Because whenever you reach the minimum, whenever you will save energy. So this is very important. Also, one of the important things that to see again the room temperature, this is a very good graph between the room temperature and time. How the VRF goes smoothly to the room temperature. You see the room temperature? Like this, not like the traditional, on, off, like it's a function, but this very smooth. So it can go operation as low as 4%. Sizing flexibility enables long run times, reduce compressor cycling, very important, because if you, if you make a bad design for a traditional system, it will make a compressor cycling. For example, oversizing uh, a split system, a traditional system, this will be, make a compressor cycling. But for the VRF, it has smoothing because of the inverter. Okay. Now, now we will go to another uh, topic, which is system types of the VRF. We have one, it's called the heat pump. Heat pump means cooling or heating. Very important to say or heating. So whenever cooling in summer or heating in winter. Indoor units have individual set points. Indoor units have uniform through system. Modes can be changed over. Let's see on the diagram how uh, this works. This is the cooling mode. You have outdoor unit, which is in the orange one that I am pointing at. And we have multiple indoor units, as you see on the blue one. You will have here something with the arrow, which is called the reverse valve. The reverse valve is the key of the heat pump. So there is no heat pump system without a reverse valve. In the cooling, in the cooling mode, you will find all the refrigerant as it goes from the compressor, goes to the outdoor unit. Okay. so. What will happen for the heating mode? In the heating mode, the reverse valve will reverse the flow. When going in winter, you need heat inside. So the compressor refrigerant that comes from the compressor with a high temperature and high pressure, and I can get use of such temperature and heat. And with the reverse valve, I go to the indoor units. Easy. Okay. And then the, uh, the, uh, the outcome refrigerant 
<coughs> from the indoor unit goes to to the outdoor unit. <coughs> this <coughs> this is a, <coughs> a very important slide. <coughs> which shows a water source VRF heat recovery system. <clears throat> water source, water source uh, VRF heat pipe system means that the condenser works with a water cooled condenser and cooling tower. So water source VRF, what does it mean? Means that loop that goes with a water cooled condenser and a cooling tower. This is a very good uh, type of system that uh, in, uh, you will find actually uh, standard 90.1 have, uh, have explored how that this system has a very high efficiency. So I recommend that even the water source VRF for energy efficiency is much higher than the air cooled VRF system. You will find that you have uh, uh, in in heat pump recovery, which uh, heat recovery system means what? Means heat recovery means cooling and heating at the same time. So you could you you can have a heat pump and a heat recovery in the system. So now we have two definitions: one for the heat pump, which says cooling or heating. And the second definition is heat recovery, which means cooling and heating, not all, and at the same time. And also, we have explained that the water source is better than the air cooled because it uh, it has much higher energy efficiency, and will be explained in the next slides. So, this is the heating mode, as you see for the water cooled pump as you see in the heating mode you can get the heat uh, uh, from uh, by the reverse valve and use it for an air handling unit and indoor any zone required heating so heat recovery as i mentioned means simultaneous heat recovery indoor units have individual control and heating control mode energy is transferred from one indoor space to another through a refrigerant line. So now it's very important to know that <clears throat> we will have a refrigerant line that, is, that transfer from one indoor space to another. So we will talk first about the two-pipe heat recovery system. In heat recovery system, it is very important to know that we will have something, we call it heat recovery unit. Some manufacturers call it branch controller. Some manufacturers call it branch selector. Some manufacturers call it flow selector. It is a heat recovery or heat exchanger that takes the heat from the indoor units that offset heat and give it to the indoor units that require heat. So this is important. <clears throat> so two-pipe system means a two-pipe comes from the outdoor unit and goes to the indoor units. We have this branch, this uh, branch controller, as you see, gives uh, heating in this part and gives cooling in this part. For a three-pipe system, we have a three pipes comes from the outdoor unit and you will find some manufacturers sells you and a three pipe system and some manufacturers sells two pipe system. I cannot say that this is better, that the three pipe is better than the two pipe or the two pipe is better than the three pipe. I want you to understand that all of them, that both of them has advantages and disadvantages. The three pipe system, very important to understand, you will have a high pressure 
liquid and high pressure compressor pipe and low pressure discharge part of course for three pipe system you will have an addition uh, piping material that can cost you if remember this word if the the outdoor unit is far from the branch selectors but if you make the branch selectors or the the branch controllers near the outdoor unit in application in such applications it will not be an extra site on the other hand if you have two pipe system take care that the for two pipe system you will have a drain from the pipe so the drain piping some manufacturer do, does not mention that so the drain material also costs so the two pipe has also it's some disadvantages both of them has advantages and disadvantages it depends on the designer okay and it's very important to understand when to use when depends on the locations so you should study the locations that's the three pipe heat recovery system as i mentioned as i see three pipes as i mentioned and it goes with it can be with hybrid and parallel series. What's the meaning of hybrid? Hybrid means there is a new uh, recent technology in VRF. They use hybrid means they use a hydronic circuit with the branch controller. This this hydronic circuit goes to a fan coils. So fan coils can have a closed circuit, not with a chiller, with a hybrid branch controller. And this is good also. You can eliminate the headache of a chiller and you can cool the water with the refrigerant from the branch controller. Or you can use this hydronic circuit with the domestic heating and piping through bathrooms. Very important. That's the meaning of hybrid. And also the parallel con configuration and series. This is, depends on the location. So this is a Y branch. And this is a header branch, as you see. Variable refreshing flow system layout. This is a, a layout for the heat recovery. Very nice layout, which, which shows how in the cooling mode, you can have two cooling mode indoor units and one only heat recovery. And if you see the blue dotted line, this is the branch circuit controller or the branch selector, which is a heat exchanger with a controller which gives the required heat for the required zone. That's the function of the branch controller in the heat recovery. So this, so the VRF with such technology have saved a lot, a lot of energy savings. Because at this time, you can stop cooling towers if you use water cooled heat recovery with the energy water cooled condensers VRF with a heat recovery, you can save a lot of energy. So, very nice advantage. Also, if you can use this in the heating mode, you will find the branch controller as mentioned in the blue dotted line will give heat to two zones and one cooling only. So if you have locations in India that have some zones in the building with cooling and other zones with heating, you can get used with such heat recovery option in the VRF. This is the cooling and heating. Also, this shows how you can also, by multiple zone cooling and heating, you can eliminate the cooling tower. You can also, if you, you can use geothermal or water source condensing units. So if you have heating and cooling in the same building, 50%, 50%, you can eliminate cooling towers. 
This explains what I am showed you in the previous slide. Heat is recovered between the water cool units, as you see, without using the cooling tower. With the water, with the water VRF, water condensing VRF units. So, if you can see the applications of the VRF, high or low rise building, educational facilities, healthcare facilities, multiple tenant residential buildings, data centers, retail stores, or hospital centers. Take care of that. Hospital centers is uh, you, you have uh, safety and standard codes for hospitals. The amount of refrigerant is very restrictive and the quality of air in operation rooms and isolation rooms. So you cannot use VRF in all zones of hospitals. You can use them in administration only. Restaurants, banquet halls, hotels, motels, and cultural facilities. So let's see that's, that's zone by zone. As I mentioned, VRF is a great system for a multiple zone system. So if I see this is an office building design and how this system has different profiles, load profiles, we can see that we have occupancy profile, orientation profile, design ventilation air requirements, construction local. So these are the key performance. Whenever you design, you should first know the profile of the building. This is the first step. Second step, you should know the orientation. Third step, ventilation. Anyone use VRF without ventilation, this will be a big mistake, a very big mistake because it will not comply with ASHRAE 62 standards. So VRF needs a ventilation, out, a dedicated outdoor air unit, and it is one of the conditions of applying VRF system. If you do not apply a ventilation system to the VRF, it will be a big problem in comfort and in ventilation uh, uh, health for the people. Local outdoor ambient design. Also, the outdoor ambient design parameters. You should take care of the refrigerant used in the VRF and how it responds with the outdoor ambient. The air source and water source strategies. If you have uh, a water uh, source, uh, cooling towers, it depends on the location. If if water sources are available. Air sources, sometimes we use in the deserts, so we don't use water source for the lack of water. Very important to consider. This is a good example for the office building, as I have mentioned. It shows the profile of each cooling load and CFM. We will see that the, the report says how if to decide the heat recovery. So one condition is a very important condition. To decide the heat recovery, to, to know how many hours you use in all the year cooling and heating at the same time. This should be from 15 to 20 percent from the operating hours of your cooling load calculations. So here it is about simultaneous zone and cooling is 1,600. The 1,064 hours for both of them. So very important to make the cooling load report and to know how many hours to decide if you will use a heat recovery or not. Also, you know you need to know you need to make a life cycle cost comparison. It depends on the life expectancy. VRF. For VRF air cooled, it is from 15 to 20 years lifetime, as mentioned to, in Ashley system and application. And for water source, it is from 20 to 25 for water source. Very important. Each one of the system has its time of life cycle. Also, 
this standard i also recommend all the designers in their specifications to put this standard whenever they specify vrf because vrf many manufacturers do not comply with such standard what does this standard says this standard is 1230 it says that refrigerant circuits one share to all indoor units some suppliers do not do that compressors one or more variable speed so this standard is very important to put whenever you comply with vrf ahri uh, supply how many air conditions air to air and heat pump and heat pump so and the heat pump water to air and air to air very important this to put on your specs ahri standard 1230 this standard also we have a, a, a very good which we call the iplv iplv what does it mean this is a calculation for a part load and operation we don't we don't have such factor to calculate in traditional systems for split systems for example This system is very important. The VRF system is very important to calculate for it the IPLV. IPLV means to know the average part load operation. So whenever you have 100% full load or 75% full load and 50% full load and 25%, you should multiply this as you see by a factor this factor the ahri has made for the number of hours per year so this means 10 percent of the operating hours work at 100 percent 0.5 means 50 percent of the operating hours work at 70 and 75 percent full load from the full load 0.3 means 30% from the operating hours work at the 50% of the full load. Very important. Why very important? Because to compare between manufacturers. So each manufacturer should give you the IPLV. So now, if you want to, v to redefine the VRF, the VRF means building envelope. So if, if you are a designer, you should take care of the building envelope. You should recommend the architect, architecture to make a very, uh, a very uh, energy saving or a good uh, building envelope according to uh, Ashley 90.1 with insulations. Whenever you increase insulation on the building envelope, Whenever you make double class on the building envelope, whenever you use geothermal application, whenever you use heat recovery, when you when you never use uh, energy recovery on the ventilation uh, air handling unit, you can go to the green less and almost the net zero energy. So VRF can help you to go to the net zero building how how can it help you with the as you see with the red line the vrf heat recovery if you have with the designer a very good building envelope comply with lead comply with ash 90.1 if you can use the ground as a heat sink with the water cooled the heat vrf if you have also energy recovery ventilation units you can go to 85 percent if you want to go to 100 percent you add solar pv so this is very good how that the vrf redefined the energy efficiency it made the energy efficiency much better to go to the net zero building so the vrf outdoor units heat pump we have now many types of the outdoor unit heat pump heat pump with heat recovery variable speed compressors 
multiple modules, air to air, water to refrigerant. Uh, I think we have uh, taken uh, a long time with you, uh, and uh, I think we can uh, we'll stop here. And maybe in another uh, webinars we can continue. But it is very interesting subject and has a lot of uh, a lot of parameters. Thank you. If you have any questions. Yeah. Or uh, I, uh, yeah. I would be delighted. Tom, thanks, Dr. Hisham. Uh, we have got some questions here. This is a question of uh, Mr. Kavar Singh. Can you see that question? Uh, yes, I think. Yes, if you have a water cooled unit with a VAV configuration, what would be more efficient? What would be more efficient? If you are F or uh, uh, water unit with VEV configuration, VR or a VEV system, we can take the VRF also to be water cooled. Very good question. That's a very good question. Okay, now uh, uh, in this question, uh, a system was introduced called VEV. VEV uh, it's an abbrevi abbreviation for variable air volume system. Variable air volume system means that you control the airflow through the fan motor of the air handling unit. And you control the temperature through the amount or the amount of airflow through the zones. Of course, this consumes less energy, but for to be to answer your question directly with water cool package with VEV configuration, it will be uh, less energy consumption than using water cooled VRF system, and it will be less whenever the number of zones of various load profiles are much greater. But if you have a few, a few zones, just one or two, uh, two zones, you can use the water cooled unit with VAV configuration, and it can be the same with the water cooled unit. I hope I, I answered your question. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Hisham, there's another question. Is heat pump is three pipe system? Yes. Is heat pump is three pipe system? Heat pipe, he we have two types of VRF. Heat pipe only, and we can have heat pipe with a heat recovery three pipe system. But if it is a heat pipe only, it will be two pipe system. I hope I answered. The question. Uh, we have some more questions uh, from Mr. Kavar Singh. Uh, Mr. Yes. Uh, Kavar Singh, uh, can you see Dr. Hisham? Yes. Uh, yeah. The question, the life cycle, which you have mentioned, does not seem possible for a country like India. Any comments? Well, that's, uh, well, uh, uh, if, if India uh, uh, 
if India, well, uh, I don't know why, yeah, the, why you went, I have mentioned two types of life cycle from 15 to 20 years for air cool system and 20 to 25 years for water cool system. So, uh, life, cycle, life cycle system, if you want to make it on 10 years, we make in Egypt for 10 years. Because sometimes if we don't have a good service after sales, the lifetime will not be more than from 10 to 12 or 13 years. So uh, that's my comment. But if you have a very good service uh, and you apply uh, a preventive maintenance program and uh, uh, you go with the recommended uh, service uh, uh, from the suppliers, I think you can reach 15 years. That's from the side. And the, for, uh, that's from the side of, uh, of uh, the operation and the service. That's, uh, that's my moderate opinion. Yeah, the, then we have another question. What are the main what consideration are, when we choose? Yeah, yeah. What are the main consideration when we choose VRF for a data center? Oh, okay, okay. Let's let's that's that's question that uh, I'd love I'd love to answer really. Uh, uh, for a data center application, that means that you have a constant load. If you have this load only in the building, why you do VRF? You should not use VRF. But if you have a data center with a variable profile zones, of course you will use VRF. But any constant load profiles, what is the purpose of using VRF? If you have all the zones of the data centers are with the same peak, are with the same profile. So how we're going to save energy? I hope I, I replied. What is the standard followed for part load calculation for VR? Oh, okay, that's that's what I was. Uh, I, I I can explain it to you. Uh, that's the IPLV. What well, I will I will uh, re-explain it to you again. This slide. This slide is about the question: What is the standard followed for the part load for VR? The standard is according to Ashley five uh, Ashley five fifty and five ninety. You have. Whenever you have, if you use AHRI or you use the Europe, the Eurovent, the Eurovent use something we call SEER, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. These two factors evaluate the part load calculation for VRF. How they do that? As I mentioned, they have an equation. This equation has how many one two three four factors each factor have, you should multiply it by the value of the manufacturer value of 100 percent if you have at 100 percent consumption or cooling capacity load you will put it on a and then you'll put it on b and then put it in c a at 100 percent b at 75 percent c at 50 percent and the 25 percent you can make it by yourself as a designer or you can get it ready number from the manufacturer and then compare that's how you evaluate the part load of each supplier if this is what you meant by your question thank you Any other yeah, thanks. Uh, you can take one more question, Dr. Hisham. Uh, if we use okay. the VRF system in healthcare and hospital, 
how to control the fresh fresh air requirement a uh, very good question and it needs a lecture but i will try to answer it very good question <laughs> okay okay that's very important question okay as as mentioned there is uh, we i said that there is there is one very important condition to use vrf you should use a ventilation dedicated outdoor air system okay regarding hospitals if you if you know uh, well the code and the standards of a hospital Two things you should apply in a hospital. If you can comply with the VRF, then it's okay. The first thing is the quality of air in a hospital. The quality of air in some zones, like the operation rooms, operation room needs a HEPA filter or a, a, a very a very high filtration quality of particles which goes less than point, uh, 0.5 uh, micrometer so if you can apply on a totally fresh air unit so you need to apply totally fresh air unit to the operation room with vrf okay this means you will have a HEPA filter and you will have also a, a, a hygienic construction according to the standard so i don't know the manufacturer can do a frame a hygienic frame and uh, stainless steel drain pans you should comply with all that with the commercial vrf commercial vrf will not cannot will not will do this as a custom made they don't have it as a standard line this is the first condition Second condition, which is very important, which I will show you on the screen now. I think you all see my screen, correct? Something called ASHRAE standard 15 for refreshment, which means that if you have in this standard, if you go with this standard, if you go with the ASHRAE standard, you will see that the health screen the, the health and the clean room applications the amount of refrigerant is very restricted the amount of refrigerant in a hospital because any contamination of the refrigerant you will violate the health safety so you should go to ASHRAE standard 15 and calculate the amount of refrigerant and see this apply or not apply with your manufacturer I hope I, I replied your question. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Hisham. Uh, you have nicely answered all the questions. Uh, can we have last slide? Uh, because participants can email you if participants have got any other query, and you can reply yeah, later course. on. Yes, I, I can. I can. I can show you the last slide, which has my emails. Now, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Rishabh Kasliwal, uh, President Ashri Rajasthan chapter, to propose the vote of thanks. You can unmute yourself. Oh, yes, sure. Uh, hi, can you hear me, Shalindra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good, good, good. Um, Good, good evening, friends. Good evening, Dr. Uh, Hisham Safar. Uh, on behalf of the Ashray Rajasthan chapter, as well as the Ashray India chapter, we, I would like to thank you uh, for such a wonderful, uh, such a wonderful and comprehensive presentation. Uh, before the presentation, I was looking at your uh, CV, and we are really excited to have you here. Uh, you know, you're extremely well qualified in this field. We all know, uh, uh, you know, that the University of Cairo has a very strong engineering discipline and uh, your PhD from there. So anyways, those things apart, um, and I am speaking on everyone's behalf here, 
what i really enjoyed in the presentation was that how you built it up slowly you started with very simple you know on a area basis where to identify you know in which building sizes should vrf be there then you took us into the different aspects of vrf idus odus and then the inverter uh, the you know the uh, the variable speed inverter then you moved on to more complicated topics like iplv and system types two pipes three pipes and uh, hybrid systems uh, that was really interesting because like uh, cairo and uh, egypt and the some of the areas you worked in india is also a very dry climate and so combining vrf with water pool applications makes a lot of sense you even showed us some results from uh, energy simulation programs on the impact on cop uh, and so i really enjoyed some of the questions i asked by mr singh and others um, a lot of knowledge there uh, i see that you have over 100 slides maybe we were able to cover less than 50 so i'll request uh, our webmaster as well as shailendra ji to coordinate with you and maybe have a follow up session or uh, maybe the slides can be arranged so once again a great presentation great um, uh, you know very exciting and very knowledgeable a big thank you on behalf of ashray india and ashray rajasthan i'd like to hand over back to shalini yeah so thanks, sorry for thanks mr rishabh for the yeah thanks mr rishabh for giving the vote of thanks and uh, thank uh, once again thank i'm thank to dr hesham Thank you. It is my pleasure and honor, uh, Shilyandra, with you, and thank you for all of you for such such lovely uh, uh, evening with you and sharing my uh, moderate knowledge. And all we always in in Egypt uh, uh, consider India is one of the uh, biggest technology in the region, and we always learn also from its marvelous engineering books. Thank you. participants uh, we are going to end this session again if you get some queries uh, you can email to dr hesham thank you